How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Bitcoin's being institutionalized. And with that come changes. There's more flexibility in what you can use these Bitcoin ETFs for. One of the big things that a lot of people like to do is to sell options, to buy options as well. And I think it's kind of crazy how the numbers work out for this. I want to explain what I mean and how much money you can actually make. Whether you're someone that's going to buy Bitcoin or someone that's going to sell Bitcoin, uh, I don't know if enough people understand really what the wheel strategy is and what you can do to make money with these ETFs. And right now, to be clear, the ETFs don't have options yet, but it's coming here very soon. And in the past, I made a 40-minute video talking about what happens uh, when you use the wheel strategy, how you can use this as a cheat code to make money. And I had done this poll, Get what's your main goal when investing? Do you want to get rich to buy whatever you want, like a fancy Lambo? Or do you want to make enough money to live on your portfolio, to quit the job that you don't like, to be able to spend more time with friends, family, kids, that kind of stuff? And 75% of people said that they just wanted to live on their portfolio. Like they don't need super flashy stuff. They just want to make enough money to do what they really want to do in life, which is why I wanted to talk about Bitcoin options. And there are drawbacks to this. I'm not even saying that I'm going to do this, but this I want to explain what, how this works and why it is sexy to some people. And I'm going to try to keep it brief. In this video, I went through the last video that I did. I'll put it in the end screen. I went through a lot of different scenarios uh, and how this all works out, how you can make money, how you can lose money in theory and that kind of stuff. So if you haven't already seen that, I'll put it on the end screen. But let me explain this again here today. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification. If you want, you can trade cryptocurrencies down there at Margex and you can make a lot of money from that if you read the market correctly. Also, there is a link down there to the indicator, HG Algo, which can really help you with dollar cost averaging and also trading as well. Now, if you haven't already got a, a little of an understanding about covered calls and cash secured puts, we'll talk about that a little bit today. But basically what options trading is, is just selling the right for someone to buy or sell an asset at a certain price at a certain time. So like, let's say, for example, I own 100 shares of Tesla. I can tell you right now the price is 192 $192 per share. I can tell you that you're allowed to buy them from me at $210 per share. And you will go and pay me money to have that right. Now, why would you do that? The, the price isn't at $210 per share. Well, we're talking about sometime in the future. So next week, right? I can say you have the right, but not the obligation to buy those shares from me. And you don't have to pay anything more than $210. So if we get really good CPI data or really good PCE or the Fed comes out or uh, someone says that they're buying Tesla or Tesla says that they've had an explosion of demand or something like that, and it goes up to $250, you get the right to buy my shares at $210 so that you make that extra money. Now, why would I do that? Well, I can get paid a premium. So you will pay me the right to buy the shares at $210. Now, most of the time, you're not going to actually buy those shares. I'm not going to have to sell the shares, right? Most of the time, I just get paid a premium and I still hold on to my share. So if I was just holding and there's not much that happens, well, I get paid and I still own everything that I owned before. For a lot of people, they think of this as a pretty sexy thing. First of all, it can help you with uh, just hedging your portfolio. Let's say something runs up really hard. People are getting really greedy. Let's say Tesla goes up to $500 in the next month. Some people would start selling calls because they already would sell anyways, but they can get a premium. They can get paid uh, extra on top of that selling price. Price. So some people like it for that reason. Some people just want some cash flow on non-cash producing assets. So they'll start selling covered calls. Now, there are a lot of different things that go into the pricing of these, how much you get paid and how much you have to pay. We're not going to go over that today. But I do think it's important to realize that with these Bitcoin ETFs, they are going to have calls, they're going to have puts, you're going to be able to trade options on them, which is something that you can 
kind of do through different platforms right now, but you have to be pretty well educated. This will be much easier. You're going to be able to go into Robinhood or Webull or Fidelity and be able to trade these. Now, how does this all work out? Well, let's say you are buying iBit, which is the BlackRock ETF, and you're buying and you're buying, uh, and you get to a full Bitcoin. Now, you need about 1,766 shares of iBit to own one Bitcoin through the ETF. Now, if we just say that you want to sell some shares, uh, we'll go through how much in a bit, but you you want to sell covered calls on some shares. You sell them in 100 share increments. We're going to say that the volatility, which is one of the big factors in how much you can sell these for, we're going to say that's similar to Tesla stock. They're both pretty volatile, right? Um, so I can kind of show you the pricing. Basically, how Tesla stock works out right now is you can sell one covered call that's 30 days out. So there's a time limit. It's about 30 days out, one month out. And you can sell it for 15% out of the money. And you get 1% of whatever those assets are worth. So let me break that down. One call, so just 100 shares, 30 days out, the strike uh, is for 30 days out, or the option expires in 30 days. It's 15% out of the money, so the price of Tesla is about 192 right now. You give someone the right to buy your shares at $220, is basically where it's at. And you will get paid 1%, so 100 shares times 192, uh, because again, Tesla shares are about $192, that's about Nineteen thousand two hundred dollars worth of Tesla that you're that you need to have, you'll get paid about one percent of that. So you'll get paid almost two hundred dollars to give someone the right to buy that in thirty days. Now, most likely, it's not going to go anywhere. You're going to get paid that two hundred dollars, and then you're going to hold on to all your shares. So you just got free money. Of course, it's not free because you lose out on some of the upside, but. You're 15% out of the money for 30 days. Like that's a huge move. 15% move to the upside in 30 days. And there are different ways that you can hedge it and sell or buy uh, depending on if you want to actually hold on to those shares. The delta is 15.7%. So they're saying basically based on volatility, there's probably about 15.7% chance that price the price of Tesla is going to be above that price at $220 in 30 days. So not a huge chance. So... Worst case scenario for you, let's just go at it from a monetary perspective. Now, I want to get to the worst case scenario here in a second, but I think it is important to realize that you don't even have to do this yourself. Like there are ETFs that sell these kinds of options. For example, here, there's something called Tesla, T-S-L-Y, this sells covered calls on Tesla. And you can see the 30-day SEC yield is 5.15% because I go through the scenario here with 1%, but that's way out of the money. Like you would have to have a big move, but you can sell them much closer to the actual price of Tesla and get paid much more. So this yield is 5.15% as opposed to 1%. Now, with that in mind, there are going to be Bitcoin ETFs that do things like this that can give you a large yield. You miss out on some of the upside. You have to pay some large fees, but if you kind of want to hold Bitcoin but not have the upside... You can hold this and it will give you a nice yield. Um, so that's something to consider too. And these ETFs, as they get more flows in, will influence the price of Bitcoin and the holdings of Bitcoin as well. Now, I want to talk more about this. I want to talk about the downside risk and the upside risk. But first, I do want to talk about my lovely planet. Now, I covered this in a video recently, but I think gaming is going to be a huge narrative. And one game that I am watching is My Lovely Planet. This is a partner of the channel. I plan on getting some of the tokens, but they are also coming from Ubisoft Lab. And I might be saying that wrong, uh, Ubisoft. Uh, but they are a huge gaming studio. And right now, they're doing a token launch. Actually, with my code underneath the video, you can get an extra 10% tokens. But they only have 20 hours left. And basically, what they're doing is whatever happens in game, they're doing in the world. So if you build a, or if you uh, grow a tree, they'll grow a tree in re in the real world. And you can see we are backed by the greatest leaders of the gaming industry. 
Like I said, a big vote of confidence coming from one of the big gaming studios out there. They have 20 hours before they start raising the price. If you do want to check it out, there's a link to it underneath the video. Of course, always do your own due diligence. And again, I did talk about this recently a little bit more in depth. So if you want to see that video, you can definitely go check it out. You know, I, I think this is more of a time to take risks as well in the market with us going into a bull run. Of course, there is risk whenever you invest in anything, but I'm going out there and I'm buying some smaller projects so that way I can get that potential upside that comes with buying smaller projects. Worst case scenario for you, let's say if you are, you have these, uh, this Bitcoin, right? You start with about 17,000 or 1,766 shares. It's worth one Bitcoin, which is 51,500. From a purely numbers perspective, not emotions, but purely numbers, the worst case scenario is Bitcoin's price goes down. You sell one of these covered calls and Bitcoin's price goes down. You lose value. Let's say Bitcoin's price goes down to 40,000. Your 51,500 is now worth 40,000 because the price of the shares goes down. Now, think about it this way. That's the worst case scenario. You, you lost about 20%. But selling that covered call actually helped you because you made that, in this case, it'd be about 1% of the portfolio if you hedge the whole thing. So you made about $500 by selling a call or selling lots of covered calls on this portfolio. So you actually came out ahead selling those covered calls in the worst case scenario. Now, mid case scenario, let's say Bitcoin's price doesn't do anything for a month. You made $500. You make $500. You don't get these taken away from you. And then, yeah, you you were able to buy some more IBIT with that if you want. So you come out ahead there in the medium scenario. Best case scenario, uh, there's a move of about 14.99% upside, right? So Bitcoin's price goes up to, what would that be? 15% on top of the 51500 so it goes right up to there. You get the premium. You get to keep your shares because it's just out of the money uh, or just in, in the money. It would be right around the strike price, right? And then probably another scenario where, where you actually make a little bit more money, but it hurts a little bit more. Let's say Bitcoin goes on a massive move. You get that 15% gain. You have to sell off your, your shares of IBIT though at a fixed price. And then you get that $500 as well. So it's kind of a crazy scenario where in the worst case scenario, you still make money. And in the middle case scenario, you still make money. The thing is, you're just capped out on the upside. And I've, I talk about that. I sketch it out in this, uh, in this video here. So a lot of people like this. Now, that takes out a lot of the upside potential for Bitcoin. So I probably won't be doing this. Maybe one day if I have so much Bitcoin and I just want some cash flow, maybe I'd do it. But let's say Bitcoin goes up to $250,000 per Bitcoin. What if you own not one Bitcoin, but you own four? Well, you'd have a million dollars worth of Bitcoin and every month you can make $10,000 from it. And the again, the worst case scenario is it goes down and you make the premium. You still make that $10,000 in a month. Again, there's there's a science to it. Until you've done this, you don't really want to do it with any large numbers. Like you want to get comfortable with it because there are a lot of emotions that come with this. But there's also another side where you can dollar cost average and you can make money. So you give someone the right to sell you their shares at a certain price, which is another really interesting thing. So the other side of this is not selling covered calls, but selling cash secured puts. Now this is different in that you're selling someone the right to sell you shares at a certain price. So if you're selling a cash secured put, you have money, you're willing to buy an asset, but you wanna buy it at a lower price than what's at right now, most likely. So let's say you're sitting there, you wanna buy some IBIT, right? You, you want some more Bitcoin, IBIT's price right now is $29.16. But you say, I don't want to pay that. Basically, what I want to do is I want to buy, if it's a little bit lower, maybe 11% lower. Let's say 11.5. Now, what does that work out to? Well, if Bitcoin's price is 51500 
you want to pay 0.885, you want to pay about $45,600 per Bitcoin. Now, of course, you're buying iBit, so it's about 11.5% lower than 29.16. But basically, you're looking at Bitcoin saying, I want to buy in like the mid 40s. If you sell someone the right to sell you iBit shares, which again, hold underlying Bitcoin, and you say, I want to buy at that price. So I want to buy a put third, or I want to sell a cash secured put 30 days out. So again, one month into the future. And I'm okay to buy it if it falls 11.5%. Well, in that case, if that's me selling that cash secured put, I have that money sitting there. I will get paid about 1% for that. So again, if I want to buy a full Bitcoin, I'll get paid about $500 for someone to sell me the right to buy iBit at a much lower price than it is today. That's kind of crazy. Some people like that a lot because they might want a dollar cost average, but they want to get paid some premiums in the meantime. Now, the chance of this happening is about the same as this. It's about 15% based on volatility. This is based on Tesla again, Tesla's volatility, which is very similar to Bitcoin's. So if you don't have enough iBit, you can tell someone the price you wanna buy and get paid if it falls there, or get paid even if it doesn't fall there. Now the, there are drawbacks to this. Let's say you wanna buy more Bitcoin and you're really convicted and you really wanna buy Bitcoin right now. Well, Bitcoin's price could go up and I can never have the actual underlying Bitcoin. I could keep on getting paid these premiums, but I lose out on a lot of the upside. Same thing here. If I sell a covered call, I could lose out on some of the upside. But if you already have a lot of Bitcoin, maybe you kind of want Bitcoin, but you don't want it at today's price. So you're going to buy it if it falls to 45,000 in the future. So if you're already going to buy it at that point in the future, of course, you give up some of that flexibility. Let's say some big bad news came out, right? All of a sudden, Binance explodes. Uh, BlackRock's been, I don't know, doing something funky with their Bitcoin. Uh, if that happens, you still have to go buy the shares at that same price. So you lose out on some of that flexibility to change your mind. But if we're in a bear market, right, and we keep on falling down lower and lower, and you're saying, okay, well, in this next bear market, I think we're going to hit exactly 51,000. And... I'm pretty bullish then if we hit that 51,000, like I'm going to buy the dip. Well, you could get paid a premium, as I said, especially when people are scared selling cash secured puts or on down days, selling cash secured puts can make you a good amount of money. Same thing when we have up days, if we're moving up very quickly, people are getting greedy. You can sell covered calls for insane premiums. So some people do this actually with Bitcoin miners right now, Bitcoin miners are already super volatile. So you sell and buy options on it. You can make a lot of money, like way more than what we're talking about here because there's more volatility. And I know some people that have made 20X, 50X, 100X over a couple of weeks on options like this. So the, the interesting thing about this is, again, it's not right for everyone, but for some people, they want to make income from non-income producing equities. So they can do that. And that is what's coming to Bitcoin, the ability to make cash. So there are going to be people that want to hedge positions. There are people that are willing to buy now because they can go make money from that volatility. They're underlyingly, underlyingly, they're underlyingly bullish. Now, un they are bullish, but maybe they already have a large position or they want to wait for specific numbers. They're very calculated. They can go play the options market. Now, this is only one of the new things that can happen with these Bitcoin ETFs. They can also borrow against them, which opens up a lot of possibilities. And again, you can do things like this now, you can hedge, but it's much more complicated than what's gonna be in the future. And this is gonna get approved. This, These options are gonna be available within months. So there are gonna be a lot of people selling these options. We're gonna have crazy volatility this is gonna put even more volatility on Bitcoin, but it is an interesting avenue. I mean, think about it this way too. Let's say you are someone that 10 years from now, you have a large portfolio. Let's say you have some IBIT in there. Let's say you have a couple bill, uh, a couple of Bitcoin worth, right? like two Bitcoin worth, three Bitcoin. Let's, let's call it five, five Bitcoin. 
all in IBIT, right? You have 250K now in Bitcoin. Maybe you bought it at the bottom of the bear market, then you flipped it over to IBIT or something like that. 10 years from now, what if Bitcoin's at a million dollars? You have $5 million worth of IBIT. Maybe you want to take a million and start producing some cash flow. Again, you lose out on the upside, but in the future, there's not going to be as much volatility. If, if you get really good at reading the markets, you can probably do this pretty successfully. And you take a million dollars and you start making 10K a month. And uh, yeah, for some people, that's going to be really interesting. Or it's just a good way to hedge at the top, right? If I already want to sell at 250K Bitcoin, why not get paid a premium, a fat premium to sell at that point? Now, the wheel strategy is a well-known a well known strategy in options where basically you go and you sell cash secured puts. So you want to buy an under, you want to buy an asset. You sell the right for someone to sell it to you at a certain price. So you're buying the dip on different stocks. You get paid a premium in the meantime, right? You have the cash thing in your account. You say that you'll buy those shares for a certain price. You get paid to sell that cash secured put. And then eventually you'll actually have to buy those shares, right? You'll be at, you'll have to, um, they're, they're going to exercise that option, right? If the underlying stock falls down drastically below the strike price. So you're going to buy those shares. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go and sell covered calls on it. So you now own the shares, you're going to sell covered calls, you're going to get paid more premiums. And then eventually the price of the stock's going to go up pretty quickly, the option is going to be exercised. And then you're going to sell those shares because you sold the covered call and then you'll have the money again then you'll go sell a cash secured put and it's just this wheel strategy it's every step of the way you get paid a premium now you can still lose underlying assets depending on how you do it but some people really like this because it is always yield producing or if you haven't already looked into this like i know people that are super into crypto super smart into crypto they've been in crypto for seven years they've been in since 2017 and they don't know how puts and calls work. They don't know how options work. You're going to need to learn this. This is going to be important, right? This is going to be a tool that you can use if you want to. It's going to be a tool that a lot of other people use, though. So you at least have to understand it. Again, I do have that longer video talking about it that I'll put it on the end screen. The title of it is This Can Make You So Much Money. And in a down market, selling covered calls can be super powerful. Now, again, I probably won't do this. There's just too much upside in Bitcoin, but I do want to explain it, why it is a big thing that's happening because it brings more investors into Bitcoin. And again, these ETFs buy the underlying assets. So it is cool. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Again, you can check out Marjax, you can check out MLP underneath the video, and you can check out that Algo as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I will see you in the next one. Bye.